Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Heloisa Ramos, and we are here to study the text of A Course in Miracles. And I'm here with my friends, Connie and Teresa, and my daughter, Sonia. So today we are starting on chapter 11, and we are going to read the introduction. Um, it's God or the Ego. Either God or the Ego is insane. If you will examine the evidence on both sides fairly, you will realize this must be true. Neither God nor the ego proposes a partial thought system. Each is internally consistent, but they are diametrically opposed in all respects, so that partial allegiance is impossible. Remember, too, that their results are as different as their foundations, and their fundamentally irreconcilable natures cannot be reconciled by vacillations between them. Nothing alive is fatherless, for life is creation. Therefore, your decision is always an answer to the question, who is my father? And you will be faithful to the father you choose. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there are two thought systems. And um, one is of God and one is of the ego. So the ego is a belief in separation. So the ego thought system is a belief system that that believes fundamentally that we are separate from our so source, from God, the God of life, that we have separated um, and are a separate life apart from our creator. Um, and, and what it's saying is that they cannot be combined. They cannot, these two thought systems cannot be um Let's see, because they are internally inconsistent and diametrically opposed, no partial allegiance is possible. So either we are, um, let's see, either we, either we are thinking with God or we are not thinking. And that's the ego thought system. <laughs> we think we're thinking with the ego, but we're not really thinking at all because all of the thoughts are false they're not true thoughts um and let's see they're not true thoughts in the sense that they deny the truth of our creation by an eternal source and therefore they affirm the idea that we are a separate ego body with individuality, with personal preferences, um, and that lives in time that is not eternal, um, that has a past and has a future, but that it's uh, limited. Um, so, um, okay. So, and and number five. Okay, this is this is really the I think. The, the real important thing to remember here is that because they're belief systems, they have results The our beliefs project and play, they project or they extend. OK, and the results are either sickness or health. OK, either we're going to be miserable, feeling miserable, or we're going to be feeling joyous and at peace. OK. Uh, so the results, you can pretty much tell which thought system the mind has adopted <laughs> by how we are experiencing the moment. You know, if we're feeling miserable, okay, well, I obviously am adopting the ego thought system. And this is the result. If I'm feeling joy, and I'm at peace, and I'm happy, then, you know, I am following the guidance of the Holy Spirit of my right mind um so uh let's see yes and we do vacillate between them number five um 
but but the nature's but their nature is irreconcilable. And I think that a lot of us try to reconcile them. And that's why we keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because we're not wholly valuing uh, just one. And so we keep trying to hold on to both beliefs and they're contradictory. So, um, yes. And so the decision here um, is always the answer to who is my father. Okay. And you will be faithful to the father you choose. Now, the ego thought system is a belief. Okay. So if we're going to be believe you know, and buy into the ego thought system, what we're saying is I am self-created. I am my father, <laughs> okay? Uh, because the ego is our belief. We made it. So it's essentially saying I made my father, so I am self-created. And it's a denial of our creation by our true father, which is God eternal. Um, okay, number two. Yet, what would you say to someone who believed this question really involves conflict? If you made the ego, how can the ego have made you? The authority problem is still the only source of conflict because the ego was made out of the wish of God's son to father him. The ego then is nothing more than a delusional system in which you made your own father. Make no mistake about this. It sounds insane when it is stated with perfect honesty, but the ego never looks on what it does with perfect honesty. Yet that is its insane premise, which is carefully hidden in the dark cornerstone of its thought system. And either the ego, which you made, is your father, or its whole thought system will not stand. That kind of reminds me of the question of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, that's literally the same that's the same question. I mean, that it is insane when I when I really like when I was reading it out loud, it's like it's that's that's crazy. <laughs> I mean yes. mm -hmm. yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say it has no real source, you see. So when you say, well, what came first, the chicken or the egg, what you're saying is okay, well, you know, one had to come first. Right. OK. And in this case, in the case of the ego thought system, which is the same question as, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, it's a loop. It just loops around itself. So it does not have a first beginning as a real source um, because it does not recognize that the son was created by the father. Um that that's what I was saying with with the ego. The ego is a belief that we value and made up, <laughs> and therefore believe in. <laughs> it's an idea of being a separate self, and um, in order to believe that we are a separate self, we have to deny that we have a creator that is our father, and therefore we have to believe that we are self created. And, and therefore, our own beliefs would create us, the maker of the beliefs. Because that's what we do when we judge, okay? And when we label, we say, okay, well, you know, I am, what's my identity? Well, let me tell you, you know, I am a mother of four and I am a female and I am heterosexual and I am da, 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 da. Okay, well, all those are evaluations and judgments, and and I believe them to be what I am. 
Okay, so I am defining myself as what I believe I am, which are my beliefs. So I am basically giving, telling myself, <laughs> I'm making up my own identity. That So I'm fathering myself. That's That's what it is. And in order to do that, I have to deny that I have, I'm already created. Uh, so, so, so which came first, you know, my, my, my beliefs about myself that made me or the me that's making up the beliefs about itself. It's the same question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Um, so. So that's the that's the last line. Okay. So are we going to believe that our beliefs make us what we are? Okay. If we're going to believe that our beliefs make us what we are, um, then we're going to be insane because we are making up those beliefs. Um, and therefore, we have no real source. We are not real. We've made ourselves unreal. Um, or the thought system is just ego's thought system cannot stand because it's not based on anything. It has no real source. Yeah. So it's a little, you know, it's almost a little hard to swallow that we have accepted a thought system that is so crazy <laughs> and, and believe it. It's a, it's almost a little bit um, like, um, and I have to say that sometimes I do, I get to the point where some of these ego beliefs are just so absurd. It's just so absurd that I'm like, okay, all right. Okay, no way, no way. I'm not going to buy that here, you know. Um, so, so. You know, so the level of absurdity in the ego sus, sub, sub, in the ego thought system is kind of its own downfall. Because, because even when the mind is insane, it's still, it's to me, it's almost like a matter of degree. It's like, how much insanity can I really buy into? <laughs> you know, there's a point where you're just like, oh, uh, no, no way. That can't be true. Okay, I'm I'm gullible, you know, but no, that's going too far. So yeah. yeah so okay, number three. Okay. <clears throat> you make by projection, but God creates by extension. The cornerstone of God's creation is you, for his thought system is light. Remember the rays that are there unseen. The more you approach the center of his thought system, the clearer the light becomes. The closer you come to the foundation of the ego's thought system, the darker and more obscure becomes the way. Yet even the little spark in your mind is enough to lighten it. Bring this light fearlessly with you and bravely hold it up to the foundation of the ego's system mm -hmm. be willing to judge it with perfect honesty open the dark cornerstone of terror on which it rests and bring it out into the light there you will see that it rested on meaninglessness and that everything of which you have been afraid was based on nothing Mm -hmm. yes so if we do that that's basically undoing fear um and that's the main uh the main job of the miracle worker is to undo fear because it's our own mind that makes it um and and if we bring that little light which is really the holy spirit with us and look at all these thoughts um then it will undo all of that darkness. Um, because when you really, really look at it with that little bit of light, you see that it's completely absurd. It's completely meaningless. 
Um, and so there's nothing to fear there because it's not real. None of it is real. Um, and, and to bring that little light is to bring with us that little willingness to see the truth of what we are as we as God created us. Uh, so it's a it's a willingness to be open to the truth. Um, and um, and that's basically the the saving grace <laughs> that we are given <laughs> by God um, that heals that heals the mind. Uh, because it releases all the fear. And the ego thought system is a thought system that's based on fear. So um, so that's why it's saying is that the more you approach the center, uh, in line four, the more you approach the center of his thought system, the thought system of God, the clearer the light becomes. Um, and so the... And there's that lesson, some of those lessons that we went through like a week ago. I am the light. Um, let's see. What was it? That That is my only function. Um, I am the light of the world. That is my only function. Um, and that's why I'm, I am here. And, and that's the, um, that's the forgiveness, you know, when we practice the forgiveness, we are practicing our only function, which is to bring that little light into the world, um, to, to dispel the darkness and the fear. Okay, number four. My brother, you are part of God and part of me. When you have at last looked at the ego's foundation without shrinking, you will also have looked upon ours. I come to you from our Father to offer you everything again. Do not refuse it in order to keep a dark cornerstone hidden, for its projection will not save you. I give you the lamp, and I will go with you. You will not take this journey alone. I will lead you to your true Father, who hath need of you as I have. Will you not answer the call of love with joy? That's very reassuring. Mm -hmm. So when we finally look at the ego's foundation as having no value and we turn to the light and the glory of God, then we live in love and joy and peace. Yes. Because mm -hmm. cause that's how we dispel uh, the darkness, which is just, um, which is wow. just an illusion. But the tricky part is... Um, is up here in the previous paragraph, line, let's see, line nine, open the dark cornerstone of terror on which is, it rests. So there's a lot of beliefs in the ego thought system about God, and a lot of them are terror. A lot of them are, belie are the belief that God is um, a God of punishment. And, you know, for some of us, we grew up with um, the threat of punishment being a very big terror, you know, um, you know, it brings up the freeze mode of response um, because we had parents that were physically punishing or physically abusive um, or just even emotionally, um, you know, very scary. That could be, that could just turn, you know, sometimes. Um, so, so there's a lot of that that needs to be healed and forgiven um, and to be able to look through that is um let's see it's necessary because that that is sort of the foundation of the insanity of the ego to turn god who is unconditionally loving and who would never punish and to have turned it into um you know a belief in a god that's uh, terrifying and vengeful and um you know con condemning and you know, sending everyone to hell <laughs> eternally. Um, that's that's a pretty big distortion. I mean, um, it's you know, it's so up, it's completely upside down. So um, it does. I would say that it does require 
uh, faith and courage to go through that, to release all of that. Um, and, and, you know, that strength comes from the practice of, of, from the practice of forgiveness because of the results that we experience. So it brings in um, more and more light, which is the strength to keep sort of digging out all of that stuff that's there. Um, yeah. Okay, so, yep, so that's the uh, introduction uh, to God or the ego. So, you know, it's just making the point that either um, yeah, that either we are re really making a decision for God and to seek the truth and um and deciding for love or, you know, we're going to, it's, it's going to take a while to just, because we keep going back and forth, vacillating until we finally realize that um, there's no benefit at all <laughs> in the ego thought system. Yeah. And we completely let the valuing go of it. Um. And then that makes us a much more, what's the word? And th that undoes the allegiance to the ego, which then um, puts the mind, I think, more, um, it, it really commits the mind to the decision to return to love. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So that's the introduction. Um, any questions before we stop? No? Okay. All right. So until next time, we're going to do the next section, which is the gifts of fatherhood. Okay. Thank you. Bye.